a few days ago I saw this tweet, or I guess a day ago I saw this tweet, and it talked about how to get backends to be really, really performant. And there's many ways to do that. But this is a very interesting thing which we actually do for Prism too, uh, which is our app that we developed um, about data, about chaining. And a lot of people kind of jumped in this guy's head and they started talking shit and uh, just telling him what he's doing is bad architecture. And even them like arguing about the semantics of what caching is and what caching isn't. And I think that's kind of inane, which means silly. Um, look, pre-computing everything or caching, whatever you want to name it, it works. So basically he explained people use real world as an excuse for poor performance. This is some trend that went on uh, Twitter about the performance of Ruby or something. But making web backends high performance is simple. Pre-compute everything. You have so much more disk space than RAM. Even a cheap DPS server will have 50 gigabytes. Use a disk space to lighten the workload on the CPU. Basically what he's saying is, if you have a page, if you have to generate a page or an API response, which to be able to generate that, you have to either do a lot of compute, a lot of like logic, a lot of business logic, or you might have to do a bunch of weird queries, complex queries, aggregation queries, maybe even queries from different tables with joins and all sorts of stuff. If you have such an endpoint or such a page, it may make sense to take the actual data that you're going to pass uh, from the API or from the into the page, right? And pre-compute it, not cache it. It's, it's a bit tiny different. It's, I'm not gonna argue about semantics, but we're gonna use pre-compute because it makes easy sense for most people. What he means is you're gonna basically either have a background job or you're gonna have some sort of system in the background that whenever data changes, it updates these results in the database. And so you can pull these results directly when you, um, when you have the request instead of pulling them and aggregating them on the spot. And this is actually what we've been doing for Prism as well. And I'd love to show you guys, let me just show you a bit of Prism. I'll have to, cause I am using a different type of recording here, but yeah, this is the Prism app and let's go to overview. Uh, in performance, right? And if you go to overview performance, you're gonna see that we have, for example, round observations or missed round observations, right? Or successful updates, which is basically on-chain transactions. Imagine, and especially if you wanna show this data for like a specific operator, like, I don't know, um, Dextrack or Vodafone or whoever, the reality is that you would have to aggregate all of this data from a bunch of places because when you ingest this data from the chain, it's um, it's ingested in different tables, you know, a table for each network because that's more efficient for the right operation. But when you have to read it, having to read transaction data from, you know, each transaction being an individual row from multiple networks for this operator or for that operator or filtered by a feed. And then you have to do the same for round observations. Then you have to do the same for revenue. Suddenly you have tens of queries, some of them pretty complex with joins and whatnot and different where clauses on the same API or on the same page. And that in turn makes the page really, really slow. Um, in fact, some of our pages used to be like even two, three minutes slow. That's how long it took them to load up all the data to be able to display 30 days of events or transactions or whatever. So the way we fix that is simply by pre-computing. We have background jobs running every five minutes where they produce a um, table of daily reports. And these daily reports then end up being displayed on the website. And it's, you know, uh, you just turn tens of queries when you want to generate the page or the JSON API response into one or two or maximum three queries. And the queries are now much, much more simple having maybe only one or two or three where clauses and no joins or anything crazy. And that's what I mean by pre-compute. And there's many ways to do it. We do it with background jobs. 
but you can also do it in a different way. You can, for example, the way he mentions he does it is by having it happen on the spot when you write. So you just wrote something, you, whenever, in our case, for example, whenever you write a new transaction in the ingest database, that would automatically update the daily reports, right? And that's another way of doing it. You have to look at the trade-offs and what exactly makes sense to you in terms of how you do this. But yeah, that's what pre-compute does. And it's really smart, I think, and it works really well. It makes the website really performant. And it's, it's not as hard to manage as you might think. It doesn't really make the architecture a lot more complex. And even if it does make the architecture a bit more complex, in some cases, to have a decently fast website, it just makes sense to have, to have it done. Um, yeah, and the reason why this is not caching, or I, I don't think it should exactly, it could be called caching, but the way most people think about caching, I just don't think you would think of this as the same, is because caching, you expect it to be invalidated. You expect it to expire a cache, right? Whereas this doesn't expire, it's always there and you just update the state as the underlying state changes. So it's a bit different, but I think you could still kind of call it caching. I'm not gonna argue about semantics. The point is, if your backend is slow, pre-computing, not everything as he says, but pre-computing the bottlenecks will help. And he is right, there is a lot more SSD and SSD is a lot cheaper and it's pretty goddamn fast compared to RAM or CPU. So you're probably gonna save some server resources too.